Hi, my name's Jenny List. I write about tech and I write a lot about other people's work. Trouble is, I rarely write about my own stuff. So here I am, sitting at my bench, and I'm here to tell you what's on Jenny's bench this week. Over the past couple of years, I've become increasingly fascinated by old cameras, 8mm movie cameras in particular, but other cameras too. I've amassed probably more 8mm movie cameras, these are all Super 8 movie cameras, than a single person should in their lifetime, given that uh, the uh, cartridges for these are still available, but they have about five minutes of film on them, and they cost a rather eye-watering price. What I like about these things is that they are relatively cheap for knackered old ones like this. If you buy a very nice one with sort of interchangeable lenses and stuff, it'll be expensive. But the old home cameras like this could be found in second-hand stores. And they've got an intricate mechanism, lots of things to play with, and lots of photographic possibilities. So I set out, because I wanted to film with these, I set out to produce my own digital cartridge. And if I can get this out of the way, the first thing I did was in OpenSCAD, I set out to model an 8mm cartridge. I went through a lot of prototypes, as you can see here. In fact, let's just keep piling them up. <laughs> And what I discovered along the way was that an 8mm cartridge is a surprisingly intricate device and has to be exactly right. So I did a load more work and what I came up with was a cartridge with a Raspberry Pi in it. This cartridge. This clicks rather neatly into a Super 8 movie camera, as you can see with this one and it contains a Raspberry Pi and a digital camera sensor positioned as close as I can make it to where the film would be. And the idea is that this creates a little Linux enabled computer in my Super 8, video, uh, Super 8 movie camera rather, um, and allows me to film using the lens just press the button, the shutter rolls as normal, and I get a very good Super 8 look to it. Now, this actually in itself is quite a challenge. I'll move the camera out of the way. As you can see, I've put the Pi in there, the Pi just fits in there. I've produced a space there for an 18650 cell. I hope that an 18650 cell will fit in there with the clips, I've left a bit of hole for the clips. But the real problem is the camera module itself. Now, this is the active part of one of those miniature cameras that you could buy on AliExpress or eBay or whatever. Um, it's basically just the camera module and a flexible PCB. And you can see under here, it curves around and goes to the, uh, to the Raspberry Pi. Um, it comes with a little plastic lens on top, like a little spy lens. And the first thing you have to do is very, very carefully tease that off with a sharp knife. And I end up with this lens. Now, the problem is getting it in exactly the right place. Now, the film area, I don't think that, is that the film gate? No, the film gate is on the cartridge on these, on one of these, is a guide for the film. It's got little, it's usually um, die cast aluminium. It's got a little set of protrusions there. It's got a little hook for moving the film forward there. And that opening there is where the shutter is. Now, the problem I have is, there's only a certain amount of space for this sensor and the sensor has to fit perfectly against the shutter opening and this has turned out to be an enormous problem. Now what I did, I created a cartridge with a big opening in the front and I created a little carrier for the camera. This is a slightly earlier version, the newer version has a slightly different design, but there's a, a, a slot there that you can put the uh, flexible PCB through and it screws into the cartridge in this sort of orientation and then goes back into and I can adjust its position. Now the trouble is adjusting its position like this, I get a picture, I can film things with the camera. The trouble is 
the width, the thickness of that glass UV filter on top of the sensor is enough to push the sensor back by about a millimetre, about half a millimetre maybe. I can't get it exactly where the film goes, which of course changes the focus properties of the lens, which means that I've created a great macro movie camera, but a useless filming scenes movie camera. My next step is to try and deal with that. Now, there are other people who've made similar things, and they all seem to use a, an unmodified Raspberry Kai camera module and somehow adjust the lens to focus using as part of the lens chain. I never managed to get that to work. So it's possible the next one I'll do is make the equivalent of the lens camera carrier, but with an opaque screen that I'm just projecting the uh, image onto and then focus the Raspberry Pi camera from about here on to the opaque screen. Now, of course, I've made a Raspberry Pi that records video. And if I pop it in the camera, uh, this particular camera I have actually modified. It's a very, very battered old camera, so I don't feel too bad about uh, modifying it. But I've actually modified it to cut away a piece of the plastic there so I can get at the socket. So I can plug a screen into this camera and a keyboard and even a mouse if I wanted to run the graphical front end and I can record video. But of course, that's not very practical. So this is a work in progress. But the next step is to have, now have I got a battery in this one? Please tell me I've got a battery in it. Of course I haven't. Let's find one that's got a battery. OK, this one I think has a battery in it. Oh, and here we are. Here is a Super 8 cartridge. When I press the shutter on this, are you on? Oh, you're not on. <laughs> when I press the shutter on this, there is a film advance there that turns. And my aim is to have a 3D printed adapter that catches the film advance and turns inside here. Now, I think probably the easiest way to sense it is with a little optical sensor. I've had it suggested I could use a magnet and a Hall effect sensor, or even just a little um, micro switch, but I think probably an optical sensor. Connect that to a GPIO on the Pi and have effectively it listen for that uh, on off signal from the opto sensor before it will fire up the uh, recording. And then I hope to have the functional equivalent of this 8mm film cartridge in a digital cartridge. I can put a lid on it, I can plop it in the machine, and so long as it is turned on, if I press the shutter, it will just record. Only unlike this one, which has five minutes of film, this one will have however many film, however much film I have spare space on the uh, micro SD card. This is one of those silly projects in a way, because uh, I'm recording this on a handheld device that can record ultra high quality video at amazing frame rates, broadcast quality video. Why would I want to replicate a low frame rate, low, uh, low resolution format from the 1970s? And the answer, of course, is I want to create, recreate the 1970s uh, look and feel. I want to create videos that look like they were shot in the 1970s because they're shot on 1970s gear. The, obviously the easy way to do that is just to go out and buy a bunch of these, but I'm not made of money, so this is the idea of the project. My next step with this, as I say, is to sort out the focus issue, get this sensor positioned exactly right so I get in focus shots. Uh, it's not just a fairly useless macro camera. Then probably sort out the uh, shutter sensor that senses the film advance turning. And then finally, and this should be fairly easy, uh, get a, an 18650 battery clip in each end and an 18650 there and a little um, 18650 charge module of the type that you can buy by the, by the, by the hundred from AliExpress. And then I should have a standalone digital film cartridge for a uh, Super 8 camera. 
Not sure what I'll do with it, but you'll probably uh, see me wandering around hacker camps with a very old camera at some point, so look forward to the videos. You'll be pleased to hear that I don't have a video sponsor, so I'm not going to sit here and tell you which PCB provider to use or where to get your VPN, but I do have something I want to talk to you about. Outside of my work, I'm part of a small non-profit called TransRescue, and what we do is get trans people like me out of dangerous places in difficult parts of the world. At the moment, we have an appeal on. We have a pair of Egyptian trans women who we were sheltering from danger from their families and from the police crackdown on LGBT people in Egypt. We had a plan to fly them out and we got them flights to a third country in preparation to taking them somewhere safe. We've got something about them on the website. We're using the pseudonyms Rudy and Nancy. Rudy and Nancy both got to the airport. Rudy was able to get on the plane, but unfortunately Nancy wasn't allowed on the plane. She just, a member of the airport staff didn't like the look of her. Unfortunately, it's a hazard of Trans Rescue's work. So we have Rudy safely in the third country and we have Nancy stuck still in Egypt. We have a flight for both of them to somewhere safe in the beginning of March, so in about 10 days time. And we would like to get Nancy to that third country. So what we're doing is we're asking you to help us. Give us some money if you possibly can. The web address is transrescue.org and you will find there details of how to donate. If you look on our blog, you'll find a blog post about Rudy and Nancy. And if you look on our YouTube, you will find some of their testimony that they recorded last year. Thanks for listening to this. Please visit Trans Rescue website and help Nancy and Rudy get out to safety. Thank you very much and see you next time.